Hi guys, welcome back. This is a real quick clip of some of the things that I make. I've made tons of new things, which I'll try to show you in this video. But the reason I haven't been doing anything is because I bought a house and I've been renovating it. I'm going to try and show you some of the things I've made in that house in this video. To start with, they had this room they called a den, which I converted into my bedroom. That's the conversion right there. They had this thing for beadboard, which I abhorred, so I made this stucco wall, actually using joint compound and then smearing it, but I really like the look of it. It's texturized, and then I painted it after that. There's four sliding glass windows in this house, and what I did was I printed on a translucent film images that would cover the whole well, about six feet by six feet square uh, footage area. The frame and the doors both are made from cypress that I had milled up. I think that was in a previous video. I might have thought at the time it was juniper, but it is cypress, and um, I had tons of it, so I really utilized it, including making live edge. The entire room is done with a baseboard of live edge and you can see on top of this frame it's also live edge cypress. The doors are all made of cypress and they slide back and forth. They're on tracks that I made. I just love the look of the light that still comes in with these soji doors but also a privacy factor which is really nice. And, um, and I picked these foresty scenes. The house is in a forested area so they really are appropriate. This is the Soji screen that's the main door that we use. It's at the front of the house, actually on the upper deck. And uh, this is a scene of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is where the house is located in that area. And it was converted into an infrared. So it is a black and white infrared. All of those light colored leaves in the front on those trees were green. So they convert when you do an infrared into a light, light, almost white color. And this shot is of the door opening, sliding. You can see the tracks. It slides on those tracks, and they're on the bottom, and they're also on the top, uh, perfectly parallel to each other, so the door slides perfectly um, plumb, top to bottom. This is the last soju screen that I did in the upper floor, and it is made from oak that I stained at dark, wa dark walnut. And um, again, it slides on a track. This is another shot of the Blue Ridge Mountains off of the parkway. And um, this has a sepia tone on it, so you'll see a slight orangey yellow hint to it. So it's a little bit different than the other two sojis I just showed you. In addition to the soji doors that I put on the sliding glass doors, I did this um, fireplace, change that up, so you probably saw it quite a bit different in the uh, first shot. And uh, anyway, I put the stone backing up and built out this fireplace area where I put an infrared heater in there. And there was a wood, no, it wasn't wood burning, it was a propane burning, but it stunk really smelled bad and it was supposed to be vent free but it was really I didn't want to breathe it so I replaced it with an infrared heater which has multiple settings and it looks pretty cool and there was a lot of inside wood that was cedar and so I got some more cedar and put it above the soji door and I also put a piece of it was about three inches thick the mantle and that is made of the uh, cypress that I had milled and lastly, the downstairs bedroom. I am in the process of, I already made the um, frames. They were made out of pine that I stained dark walnut to match the baseboard in this room. And I'm in the process of putting those four pieces up that are on the bed there. And there's the final soji door. Additionally, I made this kitchen table this is also out of cypress, and this is about three inches thick, live edge. And it 
is a beast. The legs are five by five, about maybe closer to six by six square. And uh, the table's about, I don't know, 30 inches tall. And uh, I also made this bench to go with it. So it's also made of cypress. And um, I could barely lift the thing. In fact, I couldn't lift it. I had to have help to even get it in the house. So I think I would rethink the assembly of that before I dragged it all the way up the stairs and nearly killed myself. It was so heavy. This is an oak table that it's actually a slab from a tree. So it had some holes in it and uh, it's also in like two pieces, I think. So I had to make sure it was all secured together. I used dowels in the areas that it needed to be secured. And once I did that, I filled it with a light blue resin and uh, you can see the really identifiable rings in it. So I thought it was a cool piece. And that table is about two and a half feet in diameter. So it's a pretty good sized table. Then I made this resin table and the outside pieces are spalted maple. The inside piece that runs down the middle is box elder maple and there are some red hues and values in it. It's hard to see in this photograph, but they're there. And what I put in the, for the resin was like a bronzy, chocolatey colored resin, and I got some cell action going on. So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. It's real pretty. And this is a quick pan of six different log cookies with holes in them that I filled with the resin. Four of them are beech and two of them are walnut. The friends gave me those pieces. And what I did first when I made these tables, that's what they turned into, was to sand flat parallel both sides and then put a sealant on them so when I put the resin in it wouldn't seep into the pores of the surface of the wood. Here are four of those finished tables with the resin pour in the center. And uh, I sold one of them, but this is four of them that I did keep. That's a beach right there. That's another beach. This is a wormy chestnut slab. It came from a hundred year old log that a guy gave me. And the legs on this are cypress, live edge cypress rounds, the cutoffs for you know, intents and purposes. And this, I, these are two little benches that I made to go with that resin pour table that I showed you earlier. This is a wormy chestnut bench. The legs are wormy chestnut, the top is wormy chestnut. The board, the log that goes across the middle is a piece of uh, cedar and it's extremely durable. Um, I just peeled the bark off of it so, and it's nice and smooth. But I made two of these to sit in front of the fireplace, but I don't really use them for that. But uh, it's really cool to be able to use something that somebody's given me. He, he just gave me the log and I found a friend to mill it for me and uh, work from that. And I like to start from things that are, you know, very organic and then make something interesting out of it. In fact, I plan to be doing tons more videos like that from start to finish more descriptive than, than just this general shot of what I've done in the last year. I also like to use reclaimed furniture if I can find something I think is worthwhile, like this chair. I just cut this piece of um, cedar that I filled the cracks and crevices in with the blue resin and um, just put a new seat on it. So it, it turned out pretty cool. So this is my bathroom where I made a vanity. This is also live edge cypress on the top of the vanity and the front is red cedar, uh, imported African lacewood. And I think the frame was walnut, I'm not sure. But anyway, this sink, I showed a video of this a while back and I had to do some reworking on this sink. I had to dig it deeper and I uh, went through a lot of trouble to try to find the right um, faucet for it, which, uh, you know, was a bit tricky to find because it had to be the right height. It, it turned out to be a kitchen faucet, 
which is cool and it works really well and I'm very happy about that. This is the final shot of the bathroom vanity with the faucet installed and a mirror which is also a live edge cypress mirror and you can see I use a set of antlers to hang my towels and I used a backsplash on this that was really thinly sliced spalted maple and I sealed it I don't even remember what I sealed it with but it's sealed in fact everything is sealed obviously in a water space you have to seal it but um, I'm really happy with the way this turned out I also since this was again heinous beadboard covered this with a, a roller it's called a tree so it looks like tree bark but it was a roller and I rolled it I put the stucco on not the stucco the joint compound down there and rolled it out so it drew it down and it looks like tree bark and then I painted it a medium colored gray okay so plugging along here I made this headboard out of a slab of live edge red cedar and I surrounded it with a strip of LED lights so it basically works as my night light um, in, in my room here I use just regular pine boards two by sixes and I built this bed frame uh, to, to go in another bedroom and then I stained it the same color as this which was the dresser to go with it so they look just alike the difference is this this um, has hickory on the inside of the frame and uh, the frame is pine stained like a early American stain and then the hickory is on the inside it's like uh, routered into the inside and then I put antlers on there for uh, handles for the top drawer and for the um, the door at the bottom I originally created these coat racks key racks I don't know what you want to call them to sell and then they're all on wormy chestnut and I just decided you know I can use those so I ended up incorporating those into the house speaking of things that I make to sell I made these lamps to sell and I sold several of them throughout the uh, season uh, during the festivals that I did and um, I was very happy with the way they turned out and people seemed to like them well enough so most of them are made from swirly stained glass all are individually poured I do buy the stained glass I don't make that the wood I mill myself it's typically exotic woods imported from foreign countries uh, some of the hoods are made from hickory some are made from ash um, I use a variety of things including stone and resin and whatever I think will make it more interesting and um, visually pleasing when I first moved into this house I had a number of trees cut down including part of this tree which I made into a log cookie and it had a natural hole in it so I made a chandelier out of it I probably should have showed you this earlier but this is the chandelier that goes above the cypress kitchen dining room table that I made it's made of walnut it's a slab about two inches thick and those big bulbous lights I just drilled the holes in there and then I added antlers on either end that are matching antlers and uh, it's a pretty cool piece I did a video on this earlier and it's a light fixture like a night light in the kitchen that goes above the existing cabinets where there's usually a hole but there's a um, now it's filled with this space I did a video on it so you, you can look at that if you want to see a little bit more different colors etc um, but it's veneers all layered and then resin and I added stones in it and a number of different things to give it some interest Here are two examples of screen doors that I made that I did all the carving on and I did pyrography on it and this one's kind of rustic this one on the other hand is pretty much straight cedar and then the bear I carved out of a, an image right there and um, 
I did pyrography on that and uh, all kinds of carving on that too. This is another carving of a deer head that I did and um, same process as the bear, just um, obviously different. I had made a few of these um, clock, what I call clock houses previously and I decided to make a couple more. They look very similar to the bird houses that I make except they have another level of functionality. I also made several charcuterie boards or cutting boards for sale and then I took to the festivals. This was a, it was actually a cherry log and it was about nine inches by, I don't know, three inches thick by about five and a half inch. It was, it was pretty big and I cut it up into sections, flipped it on its side so it would all be end grain and I made them match in terms of the uh, round of the, uh, the curve of the board so they were alternating throughout the piece. And um, these, these were great. They were a beast to make, but they were great. People loved them and I sold two of them. This is a wormy chestnut from a 100-year-old log charcuterie boards and this is walnut as well as that are walnut. This was in process shot. The first piece is cypress log cookie. It's probably five inches thick, all end grain, and all sealed and ready to be a chopping block. I also made some charcuterie boards out of veneers that I had. This is a mahogany crotch, and I book matched it, and um, I haven't taken it to the next level. It's hard to do a book matching and, uh, without getting that split. This is a wavy maple as well as a burl with all those little knots. So that was a bit tricky. I had to fill those little holes. And um, I put handles on all of these things as I'll show you in the end. This next one here is a curly maple. And the handles are made from ebony that I milled on the lathe. And uh, it's about a half inch thick. They're all on a very stable half inch cherry plywood substrate. And here are three more. The one on the far right is a burl that is walnut. I don't remember what the one in the middle is. It's an intense burl though. And the one on the end is a koa, which looks a lot like mahogany. And it is also book matched. I thought it might be fun to make some more resin pour charcuterie boards with irregular shapes. But I also stuck to the traditional look with the trays and the handles. And these are probably two and a half feet by 18 inches wide. And then finally in the charcuterie board area, I have this box elder maple that just beckoned to be um, book matched and uh, these red flames, that's all real. There's, there's nothing added to that or anything. And um, I just thought it was a gorgeous piece. Probably make a great table, except it's really hard to transport tables to festivals. Too bulky and just too heavy. So it's a charcuterie board. So in addition to doing the ceiling with tongue and groove fur, pine in my bedroom. I did it in this bedroom too and in addition to the insulation we stained each piece an early American stain. I had all of this oak flooring that a friend gave me and I decided to make a, a food bin for my dog. So it's pretty big and heavy and bulky but it's kind of cool too. Keeping in mind selling things I made this vessel out of pecan that matches the top matches the bottom and um, it's something I did on the lathe and something I want to do more of which I will be filming independently separately um, giving more detail as to what I'm doing when I'm using the lathe as well as other projects so I hope you stay tuned for that and I'm sorry if this was long and drawn out I know I've thrown a lot of different and unusual things into this video, but I'd really like to know if there's something you want me to elaborate on or something more that you want me to show you. Please add that in the comments below and I will address it. Thanks so much for watching.